Chapter seventy one of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso twenty eight. The ninth heaven. Primum mobile, the angelic hierarchies, the point, the nine orders of angels, and the nine heavens. After the truth against the present life of wretched mortals had been shown to me by her who lifts my mind to paradise, as in a mirror he perceives its flame, who from behind is lighted by a torch before he has it in his sight or thought and turns around to notice if the glass have told the truth and sees that it accords therewith as with its music's time a song so likewise now my memory recalls that i did as i gazed in those fair eyes whence love had made a chord to capture me and as I turned around, and mine were touched by that which in that sphere becomes apparent when e'er one looks intently at its centre, a point I saw which rays out light so keen that eyes which it enkindles needs must close by reason of its great intensity, and any star that from down here seems smallest would seem to be a moon if set beside it as at each other's side the stars are set perhaps as near as e'er a halo seems to gird the light around which colours it when densest is the air which gives it form a ring of fire was whirling round the point so swiftly that it would have overcome the motion which most quickly girds the world and by another this was girt around that by a third as this one by a fourth then by a fifth the fourth and by a sixth the fifth the seventh came next outside of these so widely spread that juno's messenger fully circled were too narrow to contain it like these the eighth ring and the ninth and each more slowly moved as in its order's number it whirled at greater distance from the first and that one had the clearest flame of all whence the pure spark least distant was because i think it most intrudes itself therein my lady who profoundly lost in thought beheld me said to me on yonder point heaven and the whole of nature are dependent look at the circle most conjoined to it and know thou that it moves so rapidly because spurred onward by its burning love and i to her if ordered with a world as i perceive it is in yonder wheels what is before me set had sated me but in the world of sense all revolutions may be perceived to be the more divine as from the centre they are more remote hence if my longing is to be appeased in this mirific and angelic temple whose only boundaries are light and love tis fit that i hear further why the example and its exemplar do not correspond for by myself i think on this in vain no wonder is it if for such a knot thy fingers insufficient are so hard hath it become through lack of being tried my lady thus she then continued take what i shall tell thee wouldst thou say it be and on it subtly concentrate thy mind the embodied circles wide or narrow are 
according to the more or less of virtue distributed through all their several parts. A greater goodness makes for greater weal, a greater body greater weal bespeaks, if all its parts are perfect equally. Hence that which with itself sweeps onward all the universe remaining corresponds to yonder circle which most loves and knows. If, then, thou stretch thy measure round the virtue, not round the appearance of the substances which seem arranged in circles to thy sight, thou'lt see a marvellous conformity of more to larger and of less to smaller in every heaven to its intelligence. Even as the hemisphere of air remains resplendent and serene when Boreas blows out of the cheek, from which he mildest proves, whereby the fog which troubled it before is cleansed and cleared until the welkin smiles upon us with the charms of all its wards. Even such did I become, when once my lady had with her clear reply provided me, and like a star in heaven the truth was seen. And when her words had ceased, not otherwise doth iron, when still boiling scintillate, than yonder circles sparkled. Every spark followed its kindler, and so many were they, that their whole number far more thousands counts than ever did the doubling of the chess. From choir to choir I heard Hosanna sung to that fixed point which holds them at the where, and ever will, where they have always been. And she, who in my mind my doubtful thoughts were seeing, said, The primal rings have shown the seraphs to thee, and the cherubim. Thus swiftly do they heed their bonds, to make them as like the point as may be, and as like it they can be, as their vision is sublime. Those are the loves that round about them move. Thrones of the countenance divine are called, and for this reason am the primal triad. And thou shouldst know that all of them are happy, according as their vision plumbs the truth, wherein all understanding is at rest. From this it may be seen how blessedness is founded on the faculty which sees, and not on that which loves and follows after. The measure of this vision is the merit which both of grace and of good will is born. Such, then, is their advance from grade to grade. The second triad, which, like that above, produces buds in this eternal spring, whose foliage no nocturnal air spoils, sings endlessly its vernal song of praise to three sweet melodies, which sound in three orders of joy, wherewith it trines itself. Three goddesses are in that hierarchy, the dominations first, the virtues next, the third one is the order of the powers. Then, in the last two dancing choirs but one, with principalities, archangels will. The last is holy of angelic joys. All these angelic orders upward look, and downward so prevail, that all to God attracted are, and all in turn attract. And Dionysius, with such great desire, gave himself up to contemplate these orders, that he both named and graded them as I. But with him, later, Gregory disagreed, and hence, as soon as ever in this heaven he oped his eyes, at his own self he smiled. Nor would I have thee wonder that on earth 
a mortal should disclose a truth so secret for he who saw it here revealed it to him with many other truths about these rings paradiso twenty nine the ninth heaven primum mobile the angelic hierarchies the creation the nature and the number of the angels. When, by the ram and by the scale surmounted, both children of Latona make together a girdle of the earth's horizon line, as long as from the moment when the zenith holds them in equipoise, till from that girdle both free themselves by changing hemisphere, only so long did Beatrice keep silent, a smile her face adorning, as she gazed intently on the point which vanquished me. She then began, I tell, but do not ask, what thou art fain to hear, for I have seen it where every where and every when is fixed not for the gain of good unto himself, which is not possible, but that his splendour might in resplendency declare I am. In his eternity, outside of time, out of all limits else, the eternal love has pleased him, in new loves disclosed himself. Nor yet, ere this, did he remain inert for neither after nor before occurred god's going to and fro upon these waters both form and matter simple and conjoined came into being which had no defect even as three arrows from a three-stringed bow and as in glass in amber or in crystal a ray so shines that from the time it comes till its completion is no interval. Thus from its lord did that triform effect ray forth into its being all at once, without distinction as to its beginning. Order was concrete, and for the substances ordained, and highest in the world were those in whom activity was brought forth pure. Pure potentiality the lowest place assumed, and between these two so strong a bond activity and potentiality conjoined that never will it be unbound. Jerome, concerning angels, wrote for you that their creation was an age-long tract of time before the remnant world was made. But written is this truth in many places by writers of the Holy Ghost, and there thou see it, if but carefully thou look, and reason too sees this to some extent, for it could not acknowledge that the motors could be so long deprived of their perfection. And now thou knowest where and when these loves created were, and how. Hence, in thy longing, three ardours have already been extinguished. Nor, counting, would one reach as far as twenty, as quickly as a portion of the angels disturbed the lowest of your elements. The rest remained, and with such great delight began the art which thou beholdest here, that never from their circling have they ceased. The fall's occasion was the cursed pride of him whom thou didst see oppressed by all the burdens of the world. Those whom thou here beholdest modest were, and recognized themselves as from that goodness sprung which apt hath made them for such great intelligence and therefore by illuminating grace and by their merit was their sight so raised 
that now a full and steadfast will is theirs. Nor would I have thee doubt, but be assured, that to receive God's grace is meritorious, according as affection opes to it. And now, concerning this consistory, much canst thou contemplate without more help, if thou hast apprehended well my words. But seeing that on earth, throughout your schools, men teach that such the angelic nature is, that it both understands, recalls, and wills. I'll further speak, that thou the simple truth mayst see, which there below confounded is, because the doctrine taught equivocates. These substances, ere since the face of God first gladdened them, have not withdrawn their eyes therefrom, whence nothing is concealed. They have no vision which is interrupted, therefore, by objects new to them, and hence need not remember by divided thought. Folk, therefore, dream down there, though not asleep, some thinking that their words are true, some not. But greater is the latter's sin and shame. And ye down yonder follow not one path when ye philosophize. So much doth love of show and being famed for it transport you. And yet with even less disdain is this endured up here than when the holy scripture is set aside or turned to wrong account. No one considers there how much it costs to sow it in the world, or how much he, who humbly clings to it, gives pleasure here. Each strives to call attention to himself, making his own inventions. These are taught by preachers, while the gospel's voice is stilled. One says that while the Christ was suffering death, the moon turned back and interposed herself, and hence the sun's light failed to reach the earth. Others, that of its own accord the light concealed itself, hence its eclipse affected Spaniards and Hindus, as it did the Jews. Florence hath not so many Lapi and Bindi as fables such as these, which all year long are shouted from the pulpits everywhere. Hence the poor sheep, who do not know, return from pasture fed on wind. Nor doth the fact that they see not that they are harmed excuse them. Christ did not say to his first company, Go and preach idle stories to the world, but gave them a foundation for the truth, and that alone found utterance from their lips. Therefore, when striving to enkindle faith, they used the gospel as their shield and lance. Men now go forth to preach with jests and tricks, and so if but a hearty laugh is raised, the cow pups up, and nothing more is asked. But in its tail there nestles such a bird, that if the crowd perceived it, it would see what that forgiveness is in which it trusts. Therefore such folly hath increased on earth, that without proof or other attestation to any kind of promise men would flock. Saint Antony is fattening thus his pig, and others also fouler far than his, by paying money void of coinage stamp. But since a great digression we have made, turn thine eyes backward to the straight road now, that thus our way be shortened with our time. This nature so exceedingly extends in number that there never was or speech or mortal thought that could extend so far. And if thou look at that which is disclosed 
by Daniel, thou wilt see that in his thousands no well-determined number is revealed. The primal light which rays out on it all is in as many ways therein received as are the lights wherewith it pairs itself. Hence, since affection follows on the act which understands, love sweetness is therein burning or warm in different degrees. And now see how exceeding high and broad is that eternal work which makes itself so many mirrors, whereupon it breaks, while in itself, as earth's, remaining one. Paradiso 30 The Empyrean God The angels and the blessed The river of light The mystic rose The throne of Henry the Seventh the sixth hour glows perhaps six thousand miles away from us and now our world inclines its shadow to a nearly level bed mid heaven the while which lies so deep above us is growing such that now and then a star is lost to our perception here below till as the brightest handmaid of the sun advances further, star by star, the sky, even to the fairest, closes to our view. Not otherwise the triumph, which for ever plays round about the point which vanquished me, and seems contained by what itself contains, little by little, faded from my sight, my seeing nothing, therefore, and my love, forced me to look again at Beatrice. If what has hitherto been said of her were all included in a single praise, but little would it serve my present turn. The beauty which I then beheld transcends not us alone, but truly I believe its maker only can enjoy it all. And herewith I confess myself o'erwhelmed more than a tragic or a comic poet was ever by a crisis in his theme. For as the sun, the sight that trembles most, so the remembrance of her lovely smile deprives my memory of its very self. From the first day when I behold her face in this life till this present sight of it, I have never ceased from following her in song, but now must my pursuit desist from tracing her beauty's progress further in my verse, as at his utmost every artist must. Such as I leave her to a louder cry than that of mine own trump, which draweth now its arduous matter to its closing, she, with a quick leader's mien and voice, resumed. We now have issued from the greatest body into the heaven which is itself pure light, light intellectual, which is full of love, love of true goodness, which is full of joy, joy which transcendeth every kind of pleasure. Here both the soldiers of paradise shalt thou behold, and one in that array which at the final judgment thou shalt see. Like a quick lightning flash, which scatters so the visual faculties, that it prevents the eyes reacting to the brightest objects, even so a living light around me shone, and left me swathed about by such a veil of its effulgence, that I lost my sight. The love which calms this last heaven always welcomes into its mist by greeting such as this, and thus adapts the candle to the flame. No sooner had these few brief words of hers attained mine inner ear 
than I perceived that I was being raised above my powers. Hence, with new sight, I so rekindled me that there cannot exist so bright a light that now mine eyes could not endure to see it. Light in a river's form I then beheld, which glowed refulgently between two banks, adorned with wondrous hues of early spring, and from this river issued living sparks, which settled everywhere among the flowers, and looked like rubies set in gold, and then, as if intoxicated by its odours, into the wondrous river plunged again, another coming out if one went in. The deep desire which now enflameth thee, and urges thee to know what thou art seeing, the better pleases me, the more it grows. But of this water it behooves thee drink, before so great a thirst as thine is slaked. So said to me the sunlight of mine eyes. The river and the topaz lights which come and go, she added, and the smiling grass are prefaces foreshadowing their truth. Not that imperfect in themselves they are, but that deficiency exists in thee because thy sight is not yet strong enough. There is no little child that turns its face so quickly toward its milk, on waking up much later than hath been its wont as I, to make far better mirrors of mine eyes, leaned over toward the stream which only flows, that we therein may be the better made. Soon as mine eyelids' eaves had drunk of it, it seemed to me transformed from long to round and then like folk who under masks have been and different seem from what they were before when once divested of the alien looks wherein their self had disappeared even so the flowers and sparks had changed themselves for me into a feast far greater so that clearly I now beheld both courts of heaven revealed. O splendour of my God, whereby I saw the exalted triumph of the realm of truth, give me the power to tell what I perceived. There is a light up yonder which allows its maker to be seen by every creature which only hath its peace in seeing him and in a circle's form it spreadeth out to such extent that its circumference would be too broad a girdle for the sun. Its whole appearance from a ray proceeds, reflected from the summit of the first moved sphere which from it takes its life and potency. And, as within the water at its base, the hill reflects itself as if to see its slopes adorned when rich with leaves and flowers. Thus ranged above and all around the light, mirrored on or a thousand tears I saw, all that of us have yet returned up there. And if the lowest row within itself gathers so great a light, how great must be this rose's width in its remotest petals. Nor did my vision of its breadth or height lose itself in them, but embraced the whole extent and inmost nature of this joy. There near, nor far, nor add, nor take away, for there, where God unmediated rules, in no way doth the natural law obtain into the yellow of the eternal rose which outward spreads in tears whose fragrance praises the sun which makes an everlasting spring was i like one who fain to speak keeps silent led on by beatrice who said to me behold how vast the white-robed convent is 
Behold, how wide the circuit of our town! Behold, our ventures so completely filled, that few are now the people longed for here. On that great seat, whereon thine eyes are fixed, by reason of the crown which rests there now, or ere thou sup that this our wedding feast shall sit the soul, august to be below, of that great Henry, who shall come to set Italia straight, ere she shall be prepared. The blinding greed, which now bewitches you, hath made you mortals like a child, who, though he die of hunger, drives his nurse away. And in the sacred forum, such an one shall prefect be, that he'll not go one road with him, in open or in covert ways, but in his holy office he will not be long endured by God, for hurled he'll be where Simon Magus is for his reward, and deeper down shall thrust a Lagner's man. End of chapter 71Chapter 72 of Jerusalem to Revelations, a Quartet of Spiritual Experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. Paradiso 31 The Empyrean God the angels and the blessed saint bernard dante's last words with beatrice the glory of mary in semblance therefore of a pure white rose the sacred soldiery which with his blood christ made his bride revealed itself to me Meanwhile the other host, which, flying, sees the glory of him who wins its love, and sings the goodness which had made them all so great, was like a swarm of bees, which now enflowers itself, and now returns to where its toil is sweetened, ever coming down to enter the spacious flower, which with so many leaves adorns itself, and reascending thence to where its love for ever makes his home. The faces of them all were living flame. Their wings were golden, and the rest so white, that never is such whiteness reached by snow. When down into the flower they came, they spread from bench to bench the peace and ardent love, which by the fanning of their sides they won. Nor did so vast a host of flying forms between the flower and that which o'er it lies into the sight or dim the splendour scene. Because the light divine so penetrates the universe according to its worth that naught can be an obstacle thereto. And this secure and joyous kingdom, thronged by people of the ages old and new, wholly on one mark, set its looks and love. O oh, trinal light, that in a single star, sparkling before their eyes, dost so appease them, look down upon our tempest here below. If the barbarians coming from a region above which Helike looms every day, while circling with the sun who is her joy, on seeing Rome and all her lofty buildings, what time the Lateran rose eminent, or every mortal thing were wonderstruck, how overwhelmed with awe must I have been, I, who from human things, to things divine, from time into eternity had come, from Florence, 
to a people just and sane because of this indeed and of my joy it pleased me to be mute and hear no sound and even as in the temple of his vow when hoping to describe it all some day a pilgrim looks around him and is cheered even so while wandering through the living light i turned mine eyes on all the graded ranks circling now up now down and now around there love persuasive faces i beheld decked by another's light and their own smiles and gestures fraught with grace and dignity my look now as a whole had comprehended the general form of paradise but had not yet settled especially on any part and i was longing with rekindled wish to ask my lady as to many things concerning which my mind was in suspense though one thing i had meant another answered thinking to look at beatrice an elder i saw arrayed as are the glorious folk his eyes and cheeks were all suffused with joy and kindliness and such his pious mien as fitting is a father's tenderness hence where is she i said impulsively and he to bring thy longing to an end was i by beatrice from mine own place withdrawn and if upon the highest ranks third round thou look thou shalt again behold her enthroned where her deserts allotted her without reply i lifted up mine eyes and saw her as reflecting from herself the eternal rays she made herself a crown not from the tract whence highest thunders peal is any mortal eye so far removed from whatsoever see it fathoms most as beatrice was distant from mine eyes but naught was that to me because her face came down to me unblurred by aught between o oh, lady thou in whom my hope is strong and who for my salvation didst endure to leave the traces of thy feet in hell i recognize the virtue and the grace of all the many things which i have seen as coming from thy power and kindliness from slavery to freedom thou hast drawn me in every way and over every path within thy power to achieve that end guard thou in me the fruitage of thy bounty that thus my soul restored to health by thee may when it leaves my body please thee still i thus implored and she though so far off she seemed looked down at me and smiled then to the eternal fount she turned again thereat the holy elder said that thou mayest bring thy journey to its perfect end for which both prayers and holy love have sent me hover about this garden with thine eyes for to have seen it will prepare thy look to rise still higher through the ray divine the queen of heaven for whom i wholly burn with love will grant us this and every grace for i a faithful servant bernard am as he who from croatia comes perchance to look at our veronica and who because of its old fame is never sated but says in thought as long as it is shown my lord christ jesus god in very truth was then your countenance like unto this 
even such was i as on the living love i gazed on him who in this world received a taste in contemplation of that peace this glad existence son of grace he then began will not be known to thee if fixed at this low level only are thine eyes look at the circles to the most remote till yonder thou behold that queen enthroned to whom devoutly subject is this realm i raised mine eyes and as at early morn the horizon's eastern parts excel in light the regions where the sun is setting so as with mine eyes from vale to mount i moved i saw a region at the utmost verge vanquish in light all other parts before me and as the skies where one awaits the car which phaeton badly drove more brightly gleam while pale the light on either side becomes so likewise brilliant in the middle loomed that peaceful oriflamme and on each side the fire in equal measure burned less bright and clustered there with wings outspread i saw more than a thousand angels jubilant and each distinct in splendour and in speed while smiling down upon their sports and songs a beauty i beheld who was the joy within the eyes of all the other saints and even if i in utterance were as rich as in imagination i'd not dare attempt to tell the least of its delight when bernard saw mine eyes intently fixed upon the object of his ardent love he turned to it his own with such affection that mine more eager grew to look again paradiso thirty two the imperium god the angels and the blessed the order of the rose the blessed children the great patricians intent on his delight that contemplator the office of a teacher took unasked and thereupon began these holy words the one so beautiful at mary's feet is she who opened and who made the wound which mary closed again and then anointed in the order which up there the third seats make rachel beneath her sits with beatrice as thou perceivest sarah rebecca judith and she who was that singer's ancestress who said when he was grieving for his sin have mercy on me thou canst thus behold downward from rank to rank as each i name and through the rose decline from leaf to leaf descending from the seventh row of seats even as above it hebrew women follow dividing all the tresses of the flower for in accordance with the attitude their faith assumed toward christ these women form the wall which separates the sacred steps on this side where full bloomed the flower is complete with all its leaves are seated those who in the christ that was to come believed and on the other where the semicircles are interrupted by still vacant seats are those who faced toward christ already come and as on this side here the glorious throne of heaven's own lady and the other seats beneath it such a great partition make so opposite the seat of that great john who ever holy underwent the desert 
wept and martyrdom and then two years in hades while francis benedict and augustine beneath him were decreed to form the line with others down to here from round to round and now behold how great god's foresight is for each of these two aspects of the faith will fill this garden to the same extent and know that downward from the row of seats which midway separates the two divisions no one is seated for his own deserts but for another's under fixed conditions for all of these are spirits who were freed before they had the power to really choose this by their faces thou canst well perceive and by their childish voices furthermore if looking at them well thou listen too thou doubtest now and doubting thou art silent but i will set thee free from that strong bond wherein thy subtle thoughts are holding thee within the ample nature of this realm nothing can any more occur by chance than either sadness thirst or hunger can for in accordance with eternal law is settled all thou seest so that here close fitting to the finger is the ring these people therefore who before their time have reached true life are not without good cause more excellent or less among themselves the king through whom this kingdom finds repose in such delight and love that no one's will is bold enough to long for any greater creating all minds in his own glad sight as him it pleases dowers each with grace in diverse ways here at the fact suffice and this is clearly and expressly marked for you in holy scripture by those twins who in their mother had their wrath aroused according to the colour of the hair of that grace therefore must the light supreme be worthily accorded as a crown without deserving of them for their deeds are these two different grades assigned which differ in their innate keen-sightedness alone the faith of parents only was indeed with innocence enough for their salvation throughout the centuries of early time then when the primal ages had elapsed males were by circumcision forced to win the virtue needed by their guileless wings but later when the age of grace had come without the perfect baptism in the christ such innocence was there below retained but now look at the face which to the christ is most resemblant for its light alone can make thee ready to behold the christ i saw such gladness raining down on her born by those holy minds created such that they might fly across those altitudes that whatsoever i had seen before ne'er held me with such admiration poised nor showed me such resemblance unto god and that same love which first descended there ave maria gratia plena singing spread out his open wings in front of her and on all sides the beatific court made such an answer to the song divine that every face became the more serene o holy father who for me dost bear to be down here and leave the pleasant place where by eternal lot thou hast thy seat who is that angel who with such delight is at our queen's eyes gazing and is so enamoured that he seems to be on fire for teaching i had thus recourse again to him who was from mary drawing beauty as from the sun 
the early morning star and he to me as much self-trust and grace as can be in an angel or a soul are all in him and we would have it so for he it was who carried down the palm to mary when god's son upon himself was pleased to take the burden of our flesh but with thine eyes now follow after me as i keep speaking and note the great patricians of this most just and kind imperial state the two that have the happiest seats up there because the nearest to augustus throne are as it were the two roots of this rose he that upon the left is at her side that father is because of whose bold taste the human species tastes such bitterness and on her right thou seest that ancient father of holy church to whom christ gave in trust the keys of his fair flower to whom christ gave in trust the keys of this fair flower and he who saw ere dying all that fair bride's troubled days who with the spear and with the nails was one beside him sit and at the other's side that leader rests neath whom the ingrate folk stiff-necked and fickle-minded lived on manna anna thou seest sitting opposite to peter so content to see her daughter that never from her doth she move her eyes although hosanna singing or against the oldest father of a family lucia sits who had thy lady go when thou thy brows in downward flight didst turn but since apace thy slumber time is fleeing here will we pause as that good tailor does who cuts his gown according to his cloth and toward the primal love direct our eyes that looking toward him thou mayest penetrate as far into his splendour as thou canst but lest perchance by moving thine own wings thou shouldst recede believing to advance grace needs must be obtained for thee by prayer grace from the one who hath the power to help thee hence follow after me with thine affection that from my words thy heart turn not aside he then began the following holy prayer Paradiso, thirty-three, the Imperium, God, Saint Bernard's prayer to Mary, the vision of God, ultimate salvation. O Virgin Mother, daughter of thy Son, humbler and loftier than any creature, eternal counsels predetermined goal, thou art the one that such nobility didst lend to human nature that its maker scorned not to make himself what he had made within thy womb rekindled was the love through whose warm influence in the eternal peace this flower hath blossomed thus here unto us thou art a noonday torch of charity and down below among mortal men thou art a living fount of hope lady so great thou art and hast such worth that one who longs for grace and unto thee hath not recourse wingless would wish to have his longing fly not only doth thy kindliness give help to him that asketh it but many times it freely runs ahead of his request in thee is mercy Pity is in thee, in thee magnificence, and all there is of goodness in a creature meets in thee. Now doth this man, who from the lowest drain of the universe hath one by one beheld, as far as here, the forms of spirit life, beseech thee of thy grace for so much strength that with his eyes he may uplift himself 
toward ultimate salvation higher still and i who never for mine own sight burned more than i do for his offer thee all my prayers and pray that they be not too poor that thou with thy prayers so dissolve each cloud of his mortality that unto him the highest pleasure may unfold itself and furthermore i pray to thee o queen who canst whate'er thou will that after such a sight thou keep all his affections sound his human promptings let thy care defeat see with how many blessed ones beatrice is clasping for my prayers her hand to thee the eyes beloved and revered by god intent on him who prayed revealed to us how grateful unto her are earnest prayers then they address them to the eternal light wherein it may not be believed the eye of any creature finds so clear a way and i who to the end of all desires was drawing near within me as i ought brought to its goal the ardour of desire bernard was smiling and was making signs for me to look on high but as he wished i was already of mine own accord because my sight as purer it became was penetrating more and more the radiance of that high light which of itself is true from this time onward greater was my sight than is our speech which yields to such a vision and memory also yields to such excess and such as he who seeth in a dream and after it the imprinted feeling stays while all the rest returns not to his mind even such am i for almost wholly fades my vision yet the sweetness which was born of it is dripping still into my heart even thus the snow is in the sun dissolved even thus the sibyl's oracles inscribed on flying leaves were lost down the wind o oh, light supreme that dost uplift thyself so far from mortal thought relend my mind a little of what thou didst seem to be and cause my tongue to be so powerful that of thy glory it may leave at least a spark unto the people still to come for to my memory if it but a while return and speak a little in these lines more of thy victory will be conceived i think the keenness of the living ray which i endured would have confounded me if from it i had turned away mine eyes and i recall that i because of this the bolder was to bear it till i made my vision one with value infinite oh the abundant grace whereby i dared to pierce the light eternal with my gaze until i had therein exhausted sight i saw that far within its depths there lies by love together in one volume bound that which in leaves lies scattered through the world substance and accident and modes thereof fused as it were in such a way that that whereof i speak is but one simple light this union's general form i think i saw since saying so i feel that i the more rejoice of more forgetfulness for me one moment is than centuries twenty-five are for the enterprise which once caused neptune to wonder at the shadow argo cast my mind thus wholly in suspense 
was gazing steadfast and motionless and all intent and gazing grew enkindled more and more such in that light doth one at last become that one can never possibly consent to turn therefrom for any other sight because the good which is the will's real object is therein wholly gathered and outside that is defective which is perfect there even as to what i do remember mine will now be shorter than an infant's speech who at the breast still bathes his tongue twas not that there was other than a simple semblance within the living light wherein i gazed which always is what it hath been before but through my sight which in me as i looked was gathering strength because i changed one sole appearance underwent a change for me within the lofty lights profound and clear subsistence there appeared to me three rings of threefold colour and of one content and one as rainbow is by rainbow seemed reflected by the other while the third seemed like a fire breathed equally from both oh how to my conception short and weak is speech and this to what i saw is such that it is not enough to call it small o oh, light eternal that alone dost dwell within thyself alone dost understand thyself and love and smile upon thyself self understanding and self understood that circle which appeared to be conceived within thyself as a reflected light when somewhat contemplated by mine eyes within itself of its own very colour to me seemed painted with our human form whence wholly set upon it was my gaze like the geometer who gives himself wholly to measuring the circle nor by thinking finds the principle he needs even such was i at that new sight i wished to see how to the ring the image there conformed itself and found their inner place but mine own wings were not enough for this had not my mind been smitten by a flash of light wherein what it was willing came here power failed my high imagining but like a smoothly moving wheel that love was now revolving my desire and will which moves the sun and all the other stars End of chapter 72 End of Paradiso End of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri Translated by Courtney Langdon Chapter 73 of Jerusalem to Revelations, a quartet of spiritual experience, by William Blake and others. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tony Addison. The Revelation of St. John the Divine. Chapters 1 to 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, 
to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you, and peace, from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who was the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests, unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Theatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labour, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast laboured, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, 
because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitines, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, Right. These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things, saith he, which hath the sharp sword with two edges, I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And unto the angel of the church in Theatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity and service, and faith and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Theatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, 
but that which ye have already hold fast till i come and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as i received of my father and i will give him the morning star he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and unto the angel of the church in sardis write these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for i have not found thy works perfect before god remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch i will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour i will come upon thee thou hast a few names even in sardis which have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and i will not blot out his name out of the book of life but i will confess his name before my father and before his angels he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of david he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth i know thy works behold i have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name behold i will make them of the synagogue of satan which say they are jews and are not but do lie behold i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that i have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and unto the angel of the church of the laodiceans write these things saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of god i know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot i would thou wert cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i will spew thee out of my mouth because thou sayest i am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor 
and blind and naked i counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye that thou mayest see as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come into him and will sup with him and he with me to him that overcometh will i grant to sit with me in my throne even as i also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches End of chapter 73chapter seventy four of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this LibriVox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison the revelation of saint john the divine chapters four to six after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and i will show thee things which must be hereafter and immediately i was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of god and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf and the third beast had a face as a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying holy 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 lord god almighty which was and is and is to come and when those beasts gave glory and honour and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth for ever and ever the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth for ever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy o god to receive glory and honour and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created and i saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals and i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth 
neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and i wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon and one of the elders saith unto me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof and i beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odours which are the prayers of saints and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and i beheld and i heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard i saying blessing and honour and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb for ever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever and i saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and i heard as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see and i saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer and when he had opened the second seal i heard the second beast say come and see and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword and when he had opened the third seal i heard the third beast say come and see and i beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and i heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine and when he had opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and i looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth and when he had opened the fifth seal i saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of god and for the testimony which they held and they cried with a loud voice saying how long o lord holy and true dost thou not judge and avenge our blood 
and them that dwell on the earth. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? End of chapter 74 Chapter 75 of Jerusalem to Revelations A Quartet of Spiritual Experience by William Blake and others This LibriVox recording is in the public domain Recording by Tony Addison The Revelation of St. John the Divine Chapters 7 to 9 And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asa were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Naphtalim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasses were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, 
salvation to our god which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped god saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be unto our god for ever and ever amen and one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore are they before the throne of god and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more neither thirst any more neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour and i saw the seven angels which stood before god and to them were given seven trumpets and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise 
and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads and to them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men and they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle and they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the hebrew tongue is abaddon but in the greek tongue hath his name apollyon one woe is past and behold there come two woes more hereafter and the sixth angel sounded and i heard a voice from the four horns at the golden altar which is before god saying to the sixth angel which hath the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates and the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand and i heard the number of them and thus i saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their power is in their mouths and in their tails for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorcerers nor of their fornication nor of their thefts 
End of chapter 75chapter seventy six of jerusalem to revelations a quartet of spiritual experience by william blake and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony addison the revelation of saint john the divine Chapters 10 to 12 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not and the angel which i saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go, and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book, out of the angel's hand, and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, and tongues, and kings. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plague as often as they will and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies 
shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt where also our lord was crucified and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and an half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth and after three days and an half the spirit of life from god entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the god of heaven the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign for ever and ever and the four and twenty elders which sat before god on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped god saying we give thee thanks o lord god almighty which art and wast and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth and the temple of god was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hell and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto god and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of god that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them 
before our god day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away at the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ End of chapter seventy six